I'd like to share my latest greenhouse gas experiment. I call it the greenhouse gas carboy experiment. First of all, I've got a statement I'd like to make. I believe in the greenhouse gas effect because without it, Earth would freeze at night and burn up during the day. I also believe greenhouse gases contributed by humans are affecting the climate. In about 100 years, humans have released carbon in the form of carbon dioxide was formed over millions of years around about 300 million years ago. How can we do that and not impact the atmosphere? First of all, I've got a hypothesis. Uh, the water vapor is more important as a greenhouse gas and CO2. They're both important, but water vapor has more absorption bands uh, that could be important than carbon dioxide. So my thinking is that may be a bigger contributor and then it's going up in the atmosphere and, and concentration just like CO2. Experimental design. Use sunlight instead of a heat lamp as a source of infrared radiation. It should give us a better range of normal wavelengths. Use large containers for a measurable rise in temperature due to absorption of infrared radiation, therefore the carboys. Obtain data throughout typical partly cloudy days to cover normal spring summer temperatures and then compare data for dry CO2, dry air, and humid air. All right. Okay, this is the experimental setup, and it was performed outside of variable weather. We're located in the Six Mile, South Carolina, and this was done during May to June period, 2015. This is showing the sun here. Uh, it actually was partly cloudy most days, so clouds would drift by occasionally. That was out of my control, so I just had to live with it. This is the uh, laptop using the data logging software for this Omega HH82U dual channel digital thermometer. Type K thermocouples going through rubber stoppers down all oh, three or four inches into the headspace of each of these carboys. These were five gallon carboys. The gas fill was switched between carboys to show the effect of carboy and position. So I would use humid air here, dry air here, or CO2, vice versa, switch them around between dry air, CO2, and humid air. That was the see any effect of the carboys. As it turns out, there was an effect. Um, the, uh, this is a data summary. Well, I've got a lot of data, and I'll briefly go over that later in an Excel spreadsheet that I've got. Um, but I tried to summarize it. And there's a lot to look at here, and I apologize for it. I didn't know of any other way to show this. For the CO2 and humid air experiments, where I had like dry CO2 in one carboy and humid air in the other, uh, for the average temperature between 11 a.m. and 5 p.m., I just arbitrarily selected that as being when we get the, got the most temperature rise. Um, the CO2 in carboy one, you can see the average is 98.1. Carboy 2, the CO2 is 87.6. It was cooler. Um, don't know why, but it was. In humid air, 88.7 carboy 1, 95.8 carboy 2. Actually, it was reverse. It was hotter in carboy 2. This was the maximum temperature in the same time period using the same experimental data rather than the average. CO2, 108.4. Carboy 1, 98.6, Carboy 2. Similar effect, it was cooler in Carboy 2. The maximum for the humid air is again reversed. It was 102.9 in Carboy 1 and 106.7, Carboy 2. Don't know why, I'm just showing you the data. Um, average temperatures between 3.30 and 4.30 p.m. This seemed to be the most interesting time period of all. Carboy 1, CO2, 102.6. And then carboy 2, 96.2. Again, a difference. Humid air, 99.2 in carboy 1, 99.9 in carboy 2. A little hotter in the carboy 2, but not as much of a difference as we saw with the average, excuse me, between 11 and 5. Um, the maximum temperatures during that same 3.30 to 4.30 p.m. time period, 108.1 for car carbon dioxide in carboy 1, 98.6 in carboy 2. So cooler in carboy 2. Um, in humid air, 102.9, carboy 1, 103.6, carboy 2. So hotter over here. 
So again, we're seeing the reverse. So really everything held true here. Not sure why the humidity and the CO2, one would be hotter in one carboy and the other one would be hotter in the other carboy. I, it made no sense to me. This was the dry air and humid air experiments. In carboy one, humid air 103.2, carboy two 97.2. Okay, dry air was 98.8 in carboy one, 101.7 in carboy two. Now why we would see dry air being hotter than humid air makes no sense to me since it supposedly doesn't have much in the way of greenhouse gases in it. The maximum temperature during that time period, um, humid air uh, in carboy 1, 112.7, carboy 2, 108.4. Again, hotter in carboy 1. Dry air, 111 in uh, the maximum uh, between 11 and 5 in carboy 1, 111, and then uh, carboy 2 is 108.9. Um, so a little a reverse effect of what we saw there when you look at the maximum. The average temperature between 3.30 and 4.30 p.m. Humid air, carboy 1, 110.1, 96.9, carboy 2. Uh, cooler in carboy 2, uh, similar to what we saw up here between 11 and 5. Dry air, 98.1, carboy 1, 106.5, and carboy 2. Um, and down here in carboy 1, from, from between 3.30 and 4.30 p.m., humid air was 112, carboy 2, 100. Pretty good difference. Uh, hotter in carboy 1. The dry air was hotter in carboy 2. And why it would be hotter than humid air again uh, is something I do not understand. So, my conclusions with all of this. Right, using this experimental setup, a five gallon glass jar filled with dry CO2, dry air, or humid air, the headspace temperature rising in the outdoor sun was more affected by the carboys or their location than the gases in the carboys. I recommend any attempt to duplicate this experiment should first focus on assuring that the carboys and or their location are absolutely identical in how they absorb sunlight. Try to plan any additional experiments such that the test temperatures are more aligned with the spectral peak absorption wavelength for the gases being tested. And what I'm going to do now is just briefly go through the Excel spreadsheets, uh, show you what the, the data uh, recording looked like, and then uh, uh, some short videos on the experimental apparatus. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to just briefly show you uh, how I recorded all my data in these Excel spreadsheets. This was imported from the data logging software on the laptop and onto my iMac. Um, you can see this particular experiment started at, on May 30th at about 7.13 in the morning. And uh, if I scroll down, you will see all the way down over 51,000, excuse me, 50, yeah, over 51,000 rows of data. So I've taken a, a uh, data point every second from about 7.13 in the morning to around 7.30 in the evening. Um, when you plot this, you, you get this. I'm going to show you some other plots here in just a minute. just want to show you generally how much data we got. One channel here was one carboy, the other channel was the other, depending on the experiment. So let's go down here to um, one of the charts and I'll show you what those, just how the, what that data looked like. Um, now, this is with one of the first experiments. I lost some of the data here in, uh, with the, from the data logger, so I didn't use this, this one. Now down here, um, I repeated it and did, was able to use this. But you'll notice how the red line being dry CO2 and the blue humid air. Humid air spiked up high, hotter than the carbon dioxide one here. Of course, they're different carboys. That's one of my issues. Here, the carbon dioxide spiked up higher. I don't know why. Over here, whoops, let's get back on this on the screen. 
Here you can see uh, this was the CO2 and carboy 1, humid air and carboy 2. See how the carbon dioxide would spike up. And right in here, we got the water vapor almost surpassed it. The second experiment, the water vapor did surpass it. Uh, and uh, again, I don't know why. This was the dry air and humid air experiments. Um, dryer being the black line, humid air being the blue line. You can see they're in, they were pretty much right on top of each other until right in here at about 318 or so. Then the humid air took off and left the dryer. And that was with the uh, humid air and carboy 1, dry air and car carboy 2. Uh, kind of a similar effect down here, but different in time period. Now, and the, uh, switching them around so the dry air was in carboy one and the humid air in carboy two, the air, dry air seemed to surpass the humid air, indicating that for some reason, the carboy, its location or something was actually overwhelming any effect of the gas that was inside. Now I'm gonna show you some, um, just some videos. They won't last too long of just the glass carboys and then uh, the experimental setup and how I purged them with uh, dry and humid air and carbon dioxide. Thank you. I just set these uh, two jugs out. They've been inside at room temperature, about 74 degrees. Got balloons attached. Should be identical balloons. Everything's hopefully matched as much as possible. We're going to see if as they heat up, if that air will expand equally and inflate the balloons about the same amount in each one of these. I use compressed air to purge the carboys with dry and humid air, and this is the way I did it. I just took an airline from my air compressor, <coughs> excuse me, filled up this tank. And it's got a valve that's easy to control. You'll see I'm purging air through the silica bag of the silica gel. And I've got it wrapped tight so there's no way air can get through it unless it goes through the silica gel. And I'm slowly purging it through there to make sure I don't overwhelm it and then just purging air down into the carboy. I do that for a few minutes. Uh, when I do the um, humid side, very similar thing. I'm gonna use a, uh, a couple of sponges that are wet and I clamp them down on my air tube so the only way air can get out and into the carboy is through the porous wet sponges. And it pretty well, seems to pretty well work. So that's, how we got drier on one side and humid on the other. And of course, for our carbon dioxide experiments, we used a CO2 cylinder. And so that's how we did it. And uh, we'll move on. Thank you. It's May 25th at about 9.47. A few minutes ago, I started my second carboy greenhouse gas experiment. It's definitely much cloudier today. Hopefully it won't rain. We'll see how this goes. But I switched over here in carboy number two. It's more hard to see the number. I've got the humid air. And then carboy number one, this one over here. I've got carbon dioxide. Basically the opposite of what I did yesterday. So we'll see how that goes today. Oh, if you look closely, you can see where the thermocouple wire is. We're basically measuring the, the head space inside there, the gaseous environment in both of these. So that's the idea here, a little different than the last experiment.